lost in greed he can give you what you need winning every day with ease wanna see what he achieves subscribe hit that like he gonna give you what you like smooth voice on the mic xbox get your hype subscribe every day is one achievement every day he's undefeated man that dude's a gaming demon better watch out when dudes start streaming Alrighty, welcome to the very first episode of Achievement Time. I am your host, Fossey and Greed. Welcome! In the show, we'll be going over topics such as gamer score, guides, news, sales, and of course, messages from you, the viewer, which can either be sent in via leaving a comment or email an audio clip to be put into the next episode. We will also discuss the game of the day, a highlighted game where we completely break down the achievement list and I talk about my experience with it. So sit down, grab your popcorn, because it's time to pop some achievements. All right, now we're at the part of the show where it's the gaming news stories of the week that I found interesting so far. I'm using TrueAchievements.com for all my news stories, so shout out to everybody there that works at True Achievements, uh, including the the reporting staff, because you guys are amazing. I check it every single day. Literally, to even go to a website on my phone, I have a quick tab to go to TrueAchievements.com. I usually check out the news stories, and then I go to whatever website I need to go to. So yeah, support your achievements because they're amazing. But the first story that I found very interesting, uh, this is by Sean Carey. So CD Projekt Red is announcing the Witcher remake. Um, I'm so excited about this because I'm a huge fan of The Witcher 2, huge fan of The Witcher 3, fan of the books, fan of the show. Uh, the only one I haven't done is The Witcher 1. I played a little bit of it. I could not get into the combat system. So the fact that they are redoing it, um, is amazing to me because I just couldn't get into the combat, but there's a lot of good story there in the first one. I watched the cutscenes. That's how I got through The Witcher 1. I was just like, I found a video online and I just, I watched The Witcher 1 instead of playing it. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna be excited to play this. I, I'm very excited to go back to The Witcher 1 and actually experience it myself. Now, I'm gonna do a thing here where I have a bot read out uh, what he has typed up. So it's just a little bit less of me just, Monoto reading this out. Uh, this might stay in future episodes. It might get kicked out. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Uh, but here is the story that he has posted. Written by Sean Carey, CD Projekt Red has announced that a remake of the first Witcher game is in development. The Witcher remake will be built from the ground up using Unreal Engine 5. Earlier in October, CD Projekt announced that a bunch of new Witcher games are in development. One, codenamed Canis Majoress, has now been revealed as a remake of the very first Witcher game. The Witcher remake is currently in the early stages of development at Polish studio Fool's Theory, and CD Projekt Red says it will be a modern reimagining of the original game that's being built from the ground up using Unreal Engine 5. Fool's Theory is leading development on the remake, but CD Projekt Red says it's providing full creative supervision on the game. The Witcher is where it all started for us, for CD Projekt Red, said Adam Badowski, studio head of CD Projekt Red. It was the first game we made, ever, and it was a big moment for us then. Going back to this place and remaking the game for the next generation of gamers to experience it feels just as big, if not bigger. Collaborating with Fool's Theory on the project is just as exciting, as some of the people there have been previously involved in the Witcher games. They know the source material well, they know how much gamers have been looking forward to seeing the remake happen, and they know how to make incredible and ambitious games. And although it will take some time before we're ready to share more about and from the game, I know it'll be worth the wait. CD Projekt Red hasn't announced a release window or platforms for the remake. The developer also notes it will be a while before it starts talking about the project in more detail. But yeah, I'm very excited for it. Uh, so that is the first news story that I personally am just like going crazy about. Also, uh, House Flipper got a Halloween update. I don't know if you knew that. Also DLC on the way. Game Pass has added three more games. Gunfire Reborn, Signalius and uh frog detective the entire mystery all right so gunfire reborn funny enough i just watched the trailer and i've seen my buddy play this game before uh he was streaming it on twitch uh so it's a like a first person roguelike action game uh you could play as like a cat who shoots like electricity out of his hands or this or that it, it kind of pegged me as like a furry game, I'm not going to lie, but you know, if that's what you're into, it might not be that, but that's just the vibe I got off of it. Yeah, if it's the same game I'm thinking of that I've watched my buddy play, uh, it looked pretty fun. Uh, I don't know if he was like playing an early access thing of it or what, but I don't, it might be something to check into. 
you know, who knows. All right, so next up is Signalis. Um, I'm going to be honest. I didn't think I would be into this game until I watched the trailer for it. Uh, so it's like a pixelated, like old school survival horror kind of video game from what I can tell. Uh, I, I was really going to pass this up until I just watched the video for this video I'm making, the Achievement Time episode. And I'm actually interested in it now. So I would recommend going out there and watch the video if you haven't. Um, it is on Game Pass, of course. Um, it looks like to be an 8 to 10 hour completion. However, right now, it, it may be just like not a lot of people have beat it. But it's got like a 6,678 TA score. So, yeah, not a lot of people have completed this. But uh, it, it looks good. It looks like a survival horror, like pixelated kind of thing. And I, I was going to pass it up because of the how it looked it looks very like independent game ish which i like some of those but so this is an unexpected one i am actually excited to check out and like i said the final game was frog detective the entire mystery um what question mark i didn't even get like i watched the trailer for it and i didn't get a whole lot out of it um it, it says it's going to be a three to four hour completion so far um it looks like there are Definitely some missable achievements in here. Uh, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm assuming uh, wait for a walkthrough <laughs> if you're wanting to fly through it. But uh, yeah, so that, that doesn't look like so bad. I mean, it looks kind of interesting, but I don't, I don't know. It's a ID at Xbox. Um, it is an adventure game, about 680 megabytes, and the thing will be about three to four hour completion. And that is on Game Pass. And this one, this one's just for me. So, uh, Dragon Age is, uh, Dragon Age Dreadwolf is completed as Alpha Milestone. I'm excited about that. I'm just dropping that out there because I am f***ing obsessed with Dragon Age. I love it. It's my, Dragon Age Origins is my favorite game of all time. So, I had to, uh, I definitely had to put this in there. I will go ahead and let the text to speech kind of read off this little step in case you're interested in Dragon Age. I know it's an achievement podcast, but I had to put this one in here for me, guys. Written by Heidi Nicholas. Dragon Age, Dreadwolf has completed its alpha milestone, a huge step forward in the development of the game, although Bioware reminds players that the game is not finished by any means. The team is incredibly happy to announce a huge step forward in the development of the game you now know as Dragon Age, Dreadwolf. We have just completed our alpha milestone, says General Manager Gary McKay. Up to this point, we've been working hard on the various parts of the game, but it's not until the alpha milestone that a game all comes together. Now, for the first time, we can experience the entire game, from the opening scenes of the first mission to the very end. We can see, hear, feel, and play everything as a cohesive experience. It's at this point that McKay reminds players that the game is not finished by any means, although completing its alpha milestone is one of the most important game development milestones. According to McKay, what the team will focus on next is getting feedback and looking at the game's pacing and narrative cohesion and bringing the visual fidelity to its final form and iterating on gameplay features. One tidbit of information we get is that we'll be heading to parts of the game's world that we haven't been to before, such as the Tavinder Empire's capital city Minrathus. We've talked about Minrathus in previous games, and now you'll finally be able to visit, McKay says. It's a city built on and fueled by magic, and the ways in which that has come through in its visual identity, and what that looks like in comparison to previous cities we've visited in Dragon Age, are pretty spectacular. There's a teeny mention of Mass Effect at the end, we have a team hard at work envisioning what the future holds for a new single-player Mass Effect game, and McKay says the team will look to share more details on Dragon Age, Dreadwolf in the future. So that's one thing I'm definitely looking forward to, but also in other news. Uh, one cool thing about uh, Midnight Suns coming out is they're going to add Deadpool in a season pass. Um, I'm interested in playing uh, Midnight Suns for sure, and I love Deadpool, so that was something cool for me. Uh, Game Pass is losing some games soon, so uh, Subnautica is going to be leaving. Um, you're going to have Football Manager 2022 and Football Manager Xbox Edition. Okay, I guess the PC and Xbox. Uh, you're going to lose those on November 8th. Art of Rally, Fae Tactics, Next Space Rebels, One Step from Eden, and Superland will all leave Game Pass on November 15th. So if you're playing those games or you want to play those games, uh, hurry up. 
So reported on by Heidi Nicholas, uh, Fable recruits Horizon Forbidden West writer. So I'm really excited for a new Fable game. I don't know how it's going to be, but uh, I love Fable. So, and I also heard Horizon Forbidden West is really, really good. So this is good to me. Um, I, I'm hoping they just do it right because you can do a Fable game right or you can do it wrong. I, I'm just hoping for the best. And posted uh, seven hours ago from recording this, uh, reported on by Sean Carey. Destroy All Humans spinoff goes free to play on Xbox. Destroy All Humans Clone Carnage is a standalone multiplayer game that launched on Xbox back in May, costing about $13. Uh, THQ Nordic has announced that the game has gone free to play on all platforms. And yes, there is a separate Destroy All Humans achievement list. Uh, Destroy All Humans Clone Carnage achievement list, excuse me. Uh, it has four game modes, Rampage, Armageddon, Race, and Abduction, six max, and supports up to four players online and two players in a local co-op. Okay, well, you sold me. You said local co-op. I got it. Um, while Clone Carnage has gone free-to-play across all platforms, technically that's not quite the truth. On PlayStation, uh, THQ Nordic is charging players one penny for the game. Looking at it right now, it looks like uh, it has a 2,126 TA score. Uh, I'm still gonna do it. Uh, I, I love local co-op, so I, I'm down. I'm totally down. And really, that's the news stories for the week that kind of interested me. Um, after that, we're gonna get into our gaming sales of the week. Now, obviously, these are very time-related, so you know, feel free to skip this section if you are going back through like and watching an old episode of this podcast. All right, and as for the sales, I'm just gonna call out a couple of them here. Um, Rift Cat, <laughs> Rift Raccoon, I haven't played it yet, but it's on sale for $2.49, uh, normally $5, uh, it can be completed in 30 minutes for a thousand gamer score, um, you have smart moves too, it's on sale for like five fifty nine. god help you, um, wait, I think smart moves too, was that the easy one, let me see, I played them both and, uh, they were both ass, yeah, okay, so Smart Moves 2 is the easy one. So that one's, you're going to get 3,000 gamer score for five bucks. Uh, that's fine. Um, Where the Bees Make Honey is on sale for $2. It's like a one to two hour completion. Took me two hours and 18 minutes to do it. Normally $10, definitely do not pay $10 for this game. The game is not good. Uh, it is a quick completion though. Follow a guide and hopefully you don't have to play it twice if you don't follow a guide you do have to play it twice i played it twice just so i didn't have to worry about doing a trick because you can literally complete that game in so quick a time i don't know how it took me two hours you can get butterfly on sale for 349 it's saying it is a two hour completion that is not true because i am clocked in at 13 minutes and i got 4,000 gamer score so you know do your own math there Woodle Tree Adventures is on sale for a dollar currently. Um, it only took me an hour and 39 minutes to complete. It's a thousand gamer score. And it's a dollar. So, you know, you can kind of just run around and collect apples. That's basically what the game is. If you're looking for the uh, cheapest quick completion on sale, it is Gem Smashers. Um, it costs you 64 cents. And the uh, you can unlock all the achievements in uh, about three hours. Um, they say none of the achievements should be a, much of a problem. I don't know much about this game. From what I can tell from the picture, it looks like like a... Uh, what was it? Was it Pong? Not Pong. I, I don't know. I'm not going to speak on this because I'm only looking at a screenshot here. But it looks like you're busting crates. Um, I don't know. But uh, it, it says should not be much of a problem. But if you need a helping hand, there are numerous achievement guys available on the site. So yeah, interesting. Um, the one I really want um, is Ravenous Devils. So if you like Fallout Shelter, you're gonna like this game because it looks exactly the same, except it is like Fallout Shelter meets Sweeney Todd, where you like you you have like a cannibal restaurant. And I'm so excited to play this game. I don't I don't even care if the achievements are easy on it. It does say, um, let me see. Do, 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 do. It takes around eight hours to unlock all the achievements and some of them buggy. I don't care. It's on sale for four bucks and it's like a Fallout Shelter kind of game that's like Sweeney Todd. You got me sold. I, I'm all in. So that's the one for me. That's my pick. It's going to be Ravenous Devils. All right. And our game of the week is going to be a little gift from NASA. So it is a free game on Xbox right now called Space Science Investigations. That's a word. 
Uh, there are zero missable achievements, and the estimates for the completion are anywhere from like a half hour to an hour if you're using a guide. Um, there's no walkthrough currently on trueachievements.com. However, Chivo's Guides did a great video on like YouTube. I highly recommend checking it out. The video is about 15 minutes long, and because I was watching that and also playing the game myself, I ended up completing the game in 30 minutes. So it's not a long completion at all. Um, you might be able to do it quicker than me, but like I would like hit play, look over, play the game, hit play, look over, play the game. So, you know, doubled my time. Uh, when you start the game, you're just kind of floating around in a space shuttle. You're in first person. It's zero G. Uh, if you have motion sickness, this is not the game for you. It is hella floaty. Like, uh, the controls kind of remind me of like a jet in a war game. How you can like hit R, B, and L, B to kind of yaw in a jet. Well, this is like you R, B, and L, B to spin yourself. Uh, one big, big thing I can give to you is hit X to break. AKA you're floating through the space shuttle, right? And you, if you hold X, you'll completely stop yourself. And sometimes when you're like looking to get something, you have to like hold that X button so you can like slow your vision so you can reach up and grab something. Yeah, X is going to be the way, trust me. The achievements in the game aren't bad. They range anywhere from collecting toys from a locker uh, and just having them in your inventory to basically just like watching videos from NASA. Uh, it kind of makes you feel like you're back in school. You're watching videos like about eyesight for astronauts in space and motion sickness and you know how it affects their muscles and all this kind of stuff uh so the, the achievements themselves aren't exactly noteworthy but i'll go over some of them um there's two notable ones i found uh one was principal investigator where it asks you to visit like 10 web links in the game so you go into the settings and you have to uh, click a link and it pops you out of the game and it sends you to like a nasa site and all you gotta do is like hit the guy button again pop in your game click another link it pops you out it's annoying but do it 10 times and you get the achievement it's a free game just remember the game is free so you know whatever uh the other one is eventually after you beat the game completely you have to uh, completely shut down the game like hit quit on it and then go back into it and you get the frequent flyer achievement for playing the game a second time uh there's also like some uh, collectibles in there where you gotta read six blue books scattered around different places. Uh, so it's a little bit of a pain, but follow his guide and like hold X so that you can stop yourself so you can actually look at the book and hit A on it. If not, you'll be like floating left and right trying to grab it. Um, but yeah, it's not bad. And there's only six of them. There's other achievements too, like finding the toilet or finding the apple or like watching one of the videos you have to watch, like no pain, no gain. You watch them video about muscles you can't really skip them so in that time i kind of looked at the cheetos guides and kind of like went through his video while that video is playing so i know what to do next so you know you can kind of capitalize on it or you can learn about like muscles in space you know maybe that's your thing uh, it was interesting but i was more in it for the achievements so yeah but yeah for a free game uh about a 30 minute completion it is not bad at all space science investigations um i would go ahead and download it on your xbox right now because you might as well it is a thousand gamer score it's another completion under your belt and it's good for any achievement addict out there i've played a lot worse it's not the best but you know hey hey it nasa nasa um if you're curious out there um the genre on ta is uh educational and trivia it's only 2 gigs in size, and it's available on both the Xbox One and Series S and X. Alright, so that is the end of our little show here. Uh, that was the game of the day. We had our gaming news stories. We we talked about video games a little bit. If you enjoyed it, if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in a comment. Like I said, email an audio clip if you ask any question. I'll put it in the next episode. Uh, I really want more gamer score and achievement related stuff out there in the universe so uh yeah let's uh let's keep wasting our lives popping achievements guys uh it's achievement time peace